to another episode of Top Drives. Now the year of the tiger is finally upon us and with this new tag we have a new carbon fiber and a new pack and that is indeed the year of the tiger pack. Now a lot of people are still really mad about the fact that year of the tiger is a lot more niche um, than it could have been but I think what makes things more frustrating is that not only is the year of the tiger a lot more niche all of the super exciting cars that were going to be Year of the Tiger, um, like the Bugatti Veyron per se, didn't make it into the tag. That being said though, we are going to review the Year of the Tiger carbon fiber um, today. So we do have 26 cars in total. There are only 26 cars that you can get from the Year of the Tiger pack that are ultra and above. That is a very, very small pool. So are these cars any good? Today I'm gonna tell you if this pack is worth opening or not. Now, a quick disclaimer before we get into to today's video. As always with these legendary challenges, um, Hudge would try and make absolutely everything useful. So honestly, every car here is Dirk Kaiser or Daily Driver to some degree in terms of how useful they are going to be for the legendary Year of the Tiger challenge. However, that's not what I'm here for today. Today I'm going to review this pack based off the fact that if you are going to open it in a general sense, how useful are these cars going to be in multiplayer events? events in year of uh, not year of but in you know challenges and uh, all everything going forward with the game but basically the most important question is how cars how these cars how useful they would be in a general sense in an open playing setting so let's get into it the ranks we got Dirk Kaiser daily driver frequent provider random rider and of course the worst of the worst is pernicious ulcer you may also know this as hog garbage but of course um, as much as I love having hog garbage in this kind of videos I wanted to make everything rhyme so let's get into it the first two are these Subarus and they're gonna be random rider I have um, you know uh, ranked this Subarus many times before and really the highest I can give it is random rider because it is four-wheel drive and medium ground clearance they also pack traction control and ABS another thing about these two Subarus uh, from JPT is that they have an MRA of 75 on the blue and 76 on the black now these are numbers that would make you go wow but they are stronger MRA numbers for Subarus and Subarus only. So they do have a little bit, they have slightly higher top speeds when it comes to Subarus, but their zero to 60s are very, very weak. Um, the handling on the RQ60, you know, the fact that it's just able to hit 90 uh, handling uh, with four wheel drive with medium makes it quite useful. But at the end of the day, they aren't very useful cars, um, but they aren't the worst either because they do have a little bit of niches to them. Uh, mainly the fact that they have slightly above average MRA for a JPT Subaru, four wheel drive center tires, traction control and ABS. Uh, besides that, the handling isn't good enough for its RQ. 0 to 60 isn't good enough. Definitely not good enough. And the top speed is just eh. Next one is going to be the Aston Martin V8 Zagata. This is going to be a pernicious ulcer. In fact, I am actually struggling to think what Hutch can do to make the Aston Martin Z8 Zagato useful in the legendary challenge. They always try and make every car useful, but it's really hard to see where the Aston Martin will shine because it shares the same RQ as the Lamborghini Countach LP400, also known as the Thanos Countach. They have very, very similar 0 to 60s. Um, one, the Lamborghini has a much better MRA. Uh, same top speed and same handling. Honestly, also almost the same RQ. Now, the, since on the topic of the Thanos Countach, I'm just going to put it into their Kaiser right away. Just to put into comparison, the Aston Martin has 74 MRA and the Lamborghini Countach has 101. Pair that, I know the 0 to 60 is quite weak, but pair that with the fact that it's a relatively high uh, top speed car. I mean, actually it's not even a relatively high top speed car. For what it is, it's actually very high, uh, close to 190 top speed stock. Anyway, let's move on to the BMWs now. The first one is gonna be the E39 M5. Now the E39 M5, I really, I, I really, really like this car, man. I really do, but I think Random Rider is the highest I can put it. Um, it is a car from the 90s and it does have traction control and ABS. It is medium ground clearance. But the MRA isn't as good as it used to be. It used to have 88, 87, now it's 76. And we talked about this when I reviewed the Continental Competition Carbon Fiber Pack for the Peugeot 208 WX Final. Uh, it is medium, but the handling just isn't good enough. The top speed isn't very high. And the 0 to 60 is, you know, although it is lower than the Legacy, the MRA isn't much better, actually. Um, the blue Legacy is 75.91, uh, and the BMW M5 
M5 is 76.49. Now that absolutely makes no sense. The fact that this M5 has similar MRA to a soup that doesn't make any sense, man. But for what it is in top drives, as much as I love the car, it really is a random rider, isn't it? Next one is the BMW M Coupe. Now the BMW M Coupe, I personally am a fan of. You are getting a relatively lightweight car coming in at 1,375 kgs. Handles quite well, you know, 80, you'll get 89 for RQ58. Um, also, it has a very, very low zero to 60. The biggest thing about this car is it has a very, very low zero to 60. 57 RQ, 4.3 zero to 60 is, I think, very similar, I believe to the Charger 3? I might be wrong with that. I think it is similar, but it might not be. But it still is very, very low, 0 to 60, combined with decent handling for a mid-range ultra air. I would give it RQ57. I'm not fair. I mean, I would give it RQ57, but I would also give it a daily driver tag. Next one is the Ford Focus RS400. Now, this one is definitely going to be Dirk Kaiser. It is one of the best all-rounders, and if not the best all-rounder uh, ultra air front wheel drive car in the game. It combines a relatively low zero to 60 for its niche in the front wheel drive category with performance tires. It also has medium ground clearance. It handles very well with 85 stock, relatively high top speed, much higher than most of the German cars at 155. And the MRA is decent for a front wheel drive car. 77 is definitely no joke. Um, but yeah, combine that with the fact that it's medium, the fact that it handles well, you got yourself a really good car, uh, especially in the front wheel drive category. So this is a fantastic car to use for club. One of my favorite cars to use in front wheel drive clubs, but outside of that, it is also a very useful car in multiplayer events. Moving on is the GMC Terrain. Now, the GMC Terrain is a pretty funny one. It handles well, and in terms of all uh, all surface tire four wheel drive SUVs, it is relatively light, coming in at 1,748 kgs stock. So it's one of the few SUVs where it's under like 1,900, 2,000. So because of that, I will give it a daily driver. Now, I don't think it deserves to be RQ64. 63 is a good place for it. Maybe it's like a low end 64, but definitely it would be a good 63 if it stayed that way. Um, the 0-60 to 60 is not the strongest thing in the world, but the handling is strong and it is relatively light. It's a bit of a hybrid all-surface tire car and I wouldn't be mad on uh, unpacking it. And if I were you, I wouldn't be mad unpacking it either. Now moving on is the Jaguar XJ 5.0 V8. Now this is an interesting one. Um, it handles quite poorly, I would say. 75, there are cars that handle better that are also rear wheel drive that are also standard. Uh, the uh, one that comes to mind is the Infinity from JPT, which, you know, handles a little better, 76. Um, that being said though, this has a slightly lower zero to 60 than the Infinity that I just talked about at 5.4. Um, it's a bit of a hybrid once again. MRA isn't strong on this, only 63. What makes the Jaguar XJ 5.0 V8 special, however, is its niche. It's a, it's a British saloon. There are not a lot of those running around, especially especially with the standard tire and medium ground clearance capability. And, you know, at the end of the day, the handling, although is quite poor, it still goes above uh, 80, it hits 83 max. And I have used it multiple times. The main reason why I'm not putting it at random rider is because I've used the Jaguar XJ 5.0 V8 many times personally, because it's been the only car to use in some regards. And because of that, I'm putting it in frequent provider. Moving on now is the Maserati 3200 GT Assetto Corsa. This car comes in at 62 to MRA and 1,587 kilograms. For 56 RQ though, you are getting a relatively low zero to 60 and decent handling. Um, when you think about it, it's four RQ less than the e, uh, E39 M5, but it has a lower zero to 60, better handling and better top speed. Now I get that, you know, the, the, the trade-off is that this is medium and this is low, but then again, it's a four RQ difference for a ground clearance change, but you get much better stats all around uh, in the on-paper stats for a lower RQ car. Now the MRI on the Assetto Corsa is very weak, but it does have the handling to boot it uh, where it can be a bit of a hybrid car, kind of like a twisty circuit hairpin kind of situation. It's still not fantastic. Um, that's why it's definitely not getting the two highest grades, but you can get some use out of the Assetto Assetto Corsa. I'm not saying it's amazing though, definitely far from that. Moving on is the Maybach 62 Lawn Delay. That is definitely Dirk Kaiser. It's one of those cars where he kind of just knows what it is. Traction control, ABS, 87 MRA, low tops, uh, yeah, low zero to 60. And you know, the, the, the top speed is, you know, weak and the handling is weak, but you know, for its standard tire niche, uh, it is a standard tire dragster. Then all the cars that fill this niche, to be honest, it's a Maybach for the Ep uh, Ultra Air. It's the other Maybach uh, for the Epic. And then it's the Cadillac 16 for legendary so it's kind of one of its own in its class moving on is the mazda rx7 type rs now this one i'm gonna put in daily driver um you are getting fantastic handling
coming out of this uh, from a lightweight car coming in at 1,280 kgs. Now, it has no MRA, only 59 MRA, but it really doesn't matter. It's a twisty car from the 90s. Uh, it has ABS, but no traction control, but really it doesn't matter. It's the lightweight, the, the low 0 to 60, to be fair, for its RQ, 51 is very low, and very high handling. It is a great bargain, in my opinion, and I would give a daily driver. Moving on is the Nissan Pathfinder. Now, the Nissan Pathfinder coming in at 8.5, 0 to 60, 76 handling, 63 uh, MRA, and 2,132 kgs. This is a very, very heavy car, but it does have traction control and ABS, um, and it does handle well. <laughs> it really does for IQ 54. Uh, that being said, though, I think I'm going to put it in frequent provider, just because the 0 to 60 is incredibly weak, but really the main thing weighing it down is its literal weight. I know it's a lot cheaper to use in the GMC terrain, and they do have the same handling, but the 0 to 60 difference is night and day, and the hand, uh, the weight difference as well is about 400 kgs or so. Uh, what is the weight? 2,130? About 400, 300 kgs, something like that. You know me and math. Uh, next one is the Suzuki Kizashi 4x4. That is also going to be... Ooh, where are we gonna put this? Because now we have the introduction of the Subaru Lavorg. I feel like because of the Subaru Lavorg, I have to put the Kizashi down from the Kaiser to Daily Driver. Still a fantastic car, four-wheel drive, standard tires, medium ground clearance, and it handles very well, but it is indeed just a slightly worse version than the Lavorg, isn't it? Now, one thing the Kizashi has over the Lavorg is that if you end up being in a saloon event, you can't use the Lavorg anyway because it's considered to be an estate. So the Kizashi will still shine in the saloon standard tire environment for the lower RQ ultra rares, which makes it very useful still, but with the existence of the Lavorg in general play, I don't think I can put the Kizashi in the Kaiser anymore. That being said though, the Kizashi 4x4 is still a fantastic twisty wet car. Now we move on to the epics. Oh, oh. All right, we're starting off with a lot of Subarus, a lot of Subarus in the limelight. The first one is going to go to the Impreza WRX STI R205 open brackets GR close brackets or uh, open parentheses GR. Are close parentheses. Uh, amazing handling to start off, right? 87 handling, medium ground clearance. It's relatively lightweight, coming in at 1,470 kgs. Four-wheel drive, once again, is what you expect from a Subaru. And it's one of the better Subarus at that. I would give it daily driver, mainly because, once again, like all Subarus, you expect that medium ground clearance at four-wheel drive, but 87 handling is very strong. I would give it daily driver. The next one goes to the Subaru Impreza WRX STI Hatch GR, and I'm going to give that frequent provider. Once again, it's still handles very well. The 0-60 to 60 is le leaves little to be desired, but the handling is very good. Full drive performance tires, really, you can't really fault a lot of these Subarus because a lot of them are just, they are, although they're just weaker Mitsubishis, they still have the same, they still bring the same advantages to the table as Mitsubishis do. As in their medium and their four-wheel drive, you can use them in city streets, you can use them in dry and wet. It's just that they're worse versions of Mitsubishi. Therefore, none of these Subarus are ever going to hit their Kaiser. Uh, next one is the Subaru Impreza WRX uh, GC8F. Now, this one is a pernicious ulcer, unfortunately. Uh, no MRI, only 57 MRI, but you know that's you know come to known that's come to be known for the Subarus. Uh, but the main thing about this is that it just it, it's very bad handling. Um, you know the, the Evo 4 is 85 stock, so I can condone these two for having better handling than the Evo 4. But this one is far below the Evo 4 in almost every comparison, if not every comparison, and for that is going to be a pernicious ultra. Not to mention that the Evo 4 is an ultra rare and a lot easier to upgrade. Moving on now is the Aston Martin uh, DBS Carbon Black. Uh, it's coming back! Uh, it was in the shadows. I had two of them max and I got rid of one of them. Well, uh, the second one was almost max. It was one upgrade away from being drag spec, but I got rid of it during the fat finals because I didn't want to finish it off. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a decent car. It's an all-rounder. Right for RQ68, you get relatively low zero to sixty, uh, decent handling, um, and also decent MRA seventy point eight. Uh, it really just is a meh car, uh, and I would give it a frequent provider tag. It's it's very average. That's what it is. Uh, now moving on to its Aston Martin brother. This one is so much better. Uh, the same zero to sixty, but it handles better, higher top speed, and way better MRA coming in at eighty nine MRA. Now I'm gonna give it daily driver because it definitely isn't the best Aston. Definitely not even the best seventy four. Um, there are a lot of better Astons out there, like the CC100, and you want to, you want to use like a twisty Aston, you want to use a Zagato because it handles better. It's a good car, the V12 Vantage, but I'm not going to give it to Kaiser. I don't think it's that amazing. It's still good, but it's not that amazing. 
Moving on is the BMW 535i78 MRA, no handling and very bad niche, uh, definitely pernicious ulcer. The Jaguar XKR75 has 93 MRA, now it used to have 97, I think it got a nerf maybe a couple updates ago, it's a very heavy car this Jaguar, okay, coming in at 1,753 kilograms. Uh, it has a low 0 to 60 to be fair, but the handling is very, very weak, um, top speed is okay, but for 68 RQ, you're getting 1 RQ more, and you have a worse to 60 worse handling and the same top speed to the Aston Martin DBS. The only thing that it has above DBS is way better MRA. This is an MRA car. It's a dragster and that's it. Uh, moving on is the Volvo C30 Polestar uh, Performance. I almost said Performante here. Uh, you're getting amazing, amazing handling, a low 0 to 60. Um, it is an average weight, average weight car coming at 1,500 kgs and the MRA is also very average, 73.21. That being said though, it's a fantastic all-rounder because it has amazing handling, low 0 to 60, and four-wheel drive, and it's a hatchback. Um, because of that, I'm going to give it to Kaiser. It is a very, very useful car, and I really, really want to get one of those. Probably one of the best cars to get from this pack. Now, let's move on to legendaries. The first one is the Bentley Continental Super Sport. It would be a bit mean for me to say it's a pernicious ulcer, uh, so I would give it Random Rider just because, you know, it's a legendary, but at the end of the day, 72 MRA. 72 MRA. It has the same 0 to 60 as a Charger Hellcat. Uh, worse MRA than a Charger Hellcat, so it's gonna lose to the Charger Hellcat in every drag. And it is so freaking heavy. 2,240 kilograms stock. That is heavier than the GMC Terrain. That is heavier than the Nissan Pathfinder. I'm sorry, there, there isn't much to praise about the Continental Super Sport. It is a very big disappointment. Uh, moving on is the Gumper to Polo S. Now, this one I would say is Dirk Kaiser. You're getting a car that handles well, has a very low 0 to 60, a high top speed, and 94.3 MRA. All right, that's a great car. Next one is the Jaguar CX-75. The only fault that I have for the CX-75 is I don't think it deserves its RQ. 96 is way too high for the CX-75. 94 would be a better place for it to go. Um, because the 0 to 60 is quite weak. 3.3 for 96 RQ. I mean, when you look at 96, you're looking at cars that are sub 3 seconds. We're talking 2.9 to 2.7, maybe even 2.6. So 3.3 definitely is very weak, but 90 handling for a four-wheel drive legend is strong, and it has a 109 MRA and a very high top speed to back it up. So even though the 0 to 60 is weak, it will be amazing in the longer drags, half mile and one mile, and definitely testable. Uh, now, finally, is going to be the Lamborghini Gallardo LP570-4 Spider Performante 2nd Gen, the car that I decided to use for the thumbnail. 89.39 uh, MRA, so it actually has better MRA uh, among many of the Lamborghinis that you can get. 89 is quite high for a Lamborghini, believe it or not. Um, Four-wheel drop performance, it does have pretty weak handling. I would say 87 is quite questionable. Uh, the 0-60, to 3.7 as well, um, not very good. When you think about it, it has the same 0-60 to 60 as... Uh, a Hellcat wide body or a SRT Hellcat, the green one, the Challenger. Uh, and the MRA is also very, very similar. In fact, the Hellcats, uh, I think they're also in the around 88 to 92 around those ranges. So it is going to be very neck and neck when it comes to drags against Hellcats. Uh, the Charger, uh, not even the Charger, but the Challenger Hellcats, which are. 9, 8 RQ cheaper to use, but then again, it they handle better uh, and it has four-wheel drive. But that being said though, uh, there are too many things weighing it down for me to put it into Kaiser, but it is still a relatively useful legendary, definitely not a Bentley, a Bentley Continental Super Sports. But anyway, this is my final ranking of the 26 cars that you can get from the year of the Tiger Carbon Fiber. So should you open it in a general sense? To be completely honest with you, I feel like a lot of you already have, just because it's a new pack. And, you know, it's a pretty hype event, so people want to open it just to say that they did. But to be completely honest with you guys, this is a very weak pack. Uh, not a lot of good cards to get from this. Uh, I, I would say that um, it definitely isn't worth it. These are the best cards to get. And even in a general sense, some of them are quite questionable. Like... The, you know, the Kazashi loses to the Lavore. The Lamborghini there is a, is a dime a dozen. The CX-75 loses to the other CX-75. CX the Apollo S, I think, loses to the Apollo Enraged. Um, really, the cars that really stand out here would be the Volvo, the Maybach, uh, the Focus, and the Countach, and that's about four cars out of everything else. At the end of the day, I personally think that there are definitely better cars to open, especially if you land an Epic. There's really only one Epic that I would be genuinely really happy with. These two are decent, and then everything else is kind of just eh.
You know what I mean? There are better packs out there. That's what I'm trying to say. So if you don't want to chase this Project 8 or Rental Quasar, if you already have the Project 8, the Year of the Tiger pack definitely isn't something that you should invest in. I don't think it's worth it. But anyway, should you open it? Once again, if you don't want the Peugeot or the Project 8, don't open it. Go open something else that's worth your money, like a Motorsport Carbon Fiber or a Lotus Carbon Fiber or something like that. Am I going to open it? See, here's the thing. I actually want the Rental Quasar. So I might open just one for fun, but definitely I won't be opening them in lump sum. And I'm not opening the Elite Pack. But anyway, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Remember to stay safe, wash your hands, and blossom out. Peace!